Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we've got another Patreon requested lesson. This one's Naive by the Kooks, and it's a real belter. It's gonna be great for you intermediate guitar players. Hopefully I can really help you expand some of your bar chord knowledge here. It's gonna be really great. Anyway, I've got a massive thank you to Pete, Jenny, Colin, Michael, Luke, and Petter for joining my Patreon page this time round. If you'd like to find out more, please click the link below. And with that out of the way, let's get on with the lesson. And hey, subscribe if you're not already. then let's start by having a look at the introduction and this is a really interesting progression hopefully I can impart some wisdom to you about some of the bar chords and just generally demystify it a little bit we're gonna start off a G sharp minor and we're gonna play that and really just focus on the lower register so the E A and D strings <laughs> We're then gonna immediately play it again, but when we do so, we're gonna switch out our pinky finger to the sixth fret of the G and then do an upstroke. Then we're gonna pause afterwards so we get this. Now, the chord at this point is now become a G sharp seven sus four. It's got a really interesting quality to it. Anyway, so we've done our G sharp minor, then we go into the G sharp seven sus four, then we're gonna do two string rakes, which is gonna be an upstroke and downstroke. Then we're gonna squeeze our G sharp seven sus four back on, and we're gonna do this really specific rhythm. And there's gonna be a little riff going on here as well. And here's what we're doing. We're gonna do an upstroke and another upstroke, then we're going to pause for a minute, then we're going to do an upstroke, downstroke, then take our pinky finger off to the fourth fret of the G and do a final upstroke. So it's... And at a faster speed, our G sharp minor just goes like this. We're then going to carry through that rhythm into our next chord, which is going to be a C shape of an E major. You may be familiar with this or you may not be, so I'll just break it down for you. We're gonna start off our pinky finger at the seventh fret of our A, then we've got our ring finger coming in at the sixth of our D, then we've got our index finger coming in at the fourth of the G, so we've got our triad here, so first, third, and fifth. Then we're gonna put our middle finger into the fifth of the B. Now this is a transposable shape. So uh, let's say we take it down from C major. Then you go up one fret, it becomes this shape. And then we just climb up. And here we are at E. And it works really nicely for this progression because after we play our E, we can then fit in our little riff from the sixth fret of the G here. And that just goes like this. So we're gonna play our E twice. Then we're gonna do three string rakes. And afterwards, we're gonna bring our pinky finger down to the sixth fret of our G. And we're gonna do the exact same thing we did before. So two upstrokes, then we're gonna do an upstroke, downstroke, then take our pinky finger off with a final upstroke. So between our G sharp minor and E, we get this. We're then gonna to go to an even more interesting chord. 
So we're essentially playing an F sharp major, but we're just breaking it down simply into a triad. So first, third and fifth, and we're playing the third as the lowest note. So it then becomes a first inversion. And just for reference, a second inversion would be if you had the fifth as the lowest note. But we're not doing that, we're just doing the third. So we'll slide into the bass note, then we'll play the chord. Then we'll do our little string rakes. Then we'll play our little riff once again, because you can see we're set up for it at the sixth fret of our G. And from here, we can then go into a B major and then F sharp seven. And F sharp seven is just the ninth of the A, eighth of the D, ninth of the G, and seventh of the B. And just for a fun bit of knowledge, if you wanted to play the song how Hugh Harris plays it, their guitar player, um, he does a really interesting version of that F sharp inversion. He does this. So what we've got going on here is the third, then an octave of the third, then we've got a root and then an octave of the root. I really wouldn't recommend playing this particular version, but you know, you've got the option. It's just the sixth fret of the E, then we've got the ninth of the A, eighth of the D, and then 11th of the G there. Anyway, let's move on. So the progression through once just sounds like this. We're then going to play the progression a second time, and there's going to be a few subtle variations. Check this out. So right off the bat, with our G-sharp minor, we're just going to play that twice, then play three string rakes this time, and then afterwards go into our G-sharp 7 sus4. We'll then move into our E, and we're just gonna hold on our E chord. Then when we go into our F sharp, we've got a couple of options. We can either do it how we did it before, or we can play a slightly extended version. So I've just shifted my fingers around, so I've got my middle finger at the 6th fret of the E, and I've got index finger at the 4th of the D, ring finger 6th of the G, and then pinky 7th of the B. Or if you don't like that shape, you could take our C shape from before, from our E, and just take that up 2 frets. And that shape works really nicely as well. Either way, we'll then go into our B and then F sharp seven. So our introduction should just sound like this. Let's now have a look at the introduction lead guitar and you'll be really thankful to know that this is really easy compared to what we've just done. It's a nice and gentle start for the lead guitar. We're going to start at the 4th fret of the G, we're just going to play that and let it ring out. Afterwards, in between the E and F sharp chords, we're going to slide that up to the 6th fret and then from the 6th to the 8th. 
we're then going to wait for the chords to go around and start the progression again and we're going to play something slightly more elaborate. So we're going to add some dyads in this time, so 6th fret of the D and 4th of the G to begin. We're then going to hold on that until we get to the F sharp where we're going to drop down to the 4th of the D, 3rd of the G. And then we're going to bring our pinky finger in to the 6th fret of the G and we're going to play that as an individual note. Afterwards we're going to take this shape all the way up to the 9th of the D, 8th of the G. And then we're going to take it down to the 8th of the D and the 6th of the G. Then the chords are going to go around the progression again and we're once more going to play something slightly more elaborate. So again, starting with our 6th fret of the D, 4th of the G. This time we're going to add in our pinky finger to the 6th fret of the G and play that as an individual note. And then we're going to take it off and play it again. Then going back down to the 4th of the D, 3rd of the G. Bringing our pinky finger into the 6th. Then back up to the 9th of the D, 8th of the G. And then going to the 8th of the D and 6th of the G and we're going to play that with two upstrokes. And that's all there is to it. Let's just review that once again. It goes like this. We've now arrived at the chorus and there's a couple of things we can choose to play here. Let's roll the clip first and then review our options. So those are the two options I'd recommend trying out. Let's start with the first one then. We've got this bizarre shape up at the seventh fret. Now this may look a bit weird, but it's really simple, I promise. It's a nice easy one. You can call it E add two or E add nine. We've essentially got the open E string, seventh fret of our A, sixth fret of our D, muted D string, and then you can either bring in your ring or pinky finger to the seventh fret of our B. So we've got our root, third, and then ninth or second. We're then going to take our shape here of our middle and index fingers down to the second and first frets. So second fret of the A, first fret of the D. But we're then going to bring in our pinky finger all the way to the fourth fret of our G. And again, that looks like a really odd shape, but it's a really simple chord. It's just a B major. We're then going to take our pinky finger down one fret to the third fret of the G. And the chord now becomes a B major 7. So we're going to play that twice. And when we play it the third time, we're just going to pick the rhythm up a little bit with our E add 9. And then we're going to go into a G sharp minor and F sharp major. And the rhythm should just go like this. We've got our somewhat reminiscent rhythm of what we did in the introduction. So with our G sharp minor, we've got our two hits. Then we've got our string rakes. We can do three. Then we're doing our up and down melody on the F sharp. 
we're then going to go around to play the progression a final time, going back to our E add 9. And then B major and B major 7, only this time we're just going to mix the rhythm up a little bit with our B chords. Let's now talk about the second option. If you didn't like those particular shapes, you could always change them to a E suspended 2, which is just hammering down the 7th fret from the A string down. Then we're bringing on our ring and pinky fingers to the 9th fret of our D and G. We can then go to a B major, and then we can go to an E flat minor 7. Let's now have a look at the second verse. I'm just going to show you some alternative ways of playing our main progression, and this is something the Kooks do when they play it live. Check this out. So these are all the exact same chords, we're just using these new exciting shapes. We're going to start with this shorthand version of a G sharp minor. So that's 6th fret of the D, and then 4th of the G, B and E. We're then going to move into our E chord, and for us that's now going to be the 9th fret of our D, G and B. And that's just a part of a A string bar chord of an E major. Just getting rid of the lowest note, so the E note, so that also becomes an inversion. Quite a handy one as well. Then the next chord's a really interesting one. So this is still an F sharp inversion. We're just dropping back our index finger to the 8th fret of our D. Then our pinky finger is going to the 11th of the G. We're going to mute the B string, and then our middle finger is going to play the 9th of the high E. And it's still the exact same inversion. We've got the third as the lowest note, then we've got our root, and then our fifth. But yeah, really interesting shape, that one. Then to go into our B chord, this is a cool little trick, we're just going to move our index finger up one fret so it goes to the ninth of the D now, keeping the rest of it the same. And then to go into our F sharp 7, we're just going to take our middle finger off of the high E string, and then we're going to drop our index finger back one fret, so we've just got a dyad now between the 8th fret of our D and the 11th of the G. And that goes really nicely along with the main progression. Again, here's how it sounds.
Right then, we're now gonna have a look at the instrumental section, and this is gonna be broken down into two guitar parts. Let's have a look at the example first, and then break it down. Me, I know, she knows that I'm not fond of us, So those are our two guitar parts. Let's start by having a look at the first one, which is gonna be a dyad ascending run. We're gonna start at the sixth of the D and the fourth of the G. We're then gonna slide that shape up two frets to the eighth of the D and the sixth of the G. We're then gonna go up just a little bit now. We're gonna to go to the ninth of the D and the eighth of the G now. And then we're gonna go up to the 11th of the D and 9th of the G. And at this point, we're then gonna jump all the way up to the 16th fret of the D and G, and then we're gonna play the open B and E as well. And if you want to, you can use your index finger just to mute the E and A strings as well. And at this point, we're then gonna switch over. Our index finger is gonna bar the 16th fret of the D, G, B, and E. We're then gonna to go to ascend once more, starting at the sixth and fourth. Moving up to the eighth and sixth. To the ninth and eighth. Then to the 11th and ninth. And at this point, our fingers are gonna switch over. We're then gonna do the eighth of the D and the 11th of the G. We're then gonna move our index finger up to the ninth. And then we're gonna move down to the eighth of the D and the ninth of the G. So we get this slowly. Let's now have a look at the second guitar. So we're gonna be really high up the neck for this one, 16th of the B, 14th of the E. And the real trick with this is to play the notes and slide them down to the next position. So we're gonna go from the 16th and 14th down to the 14th and 12th. And I'll just do that again. We're then gonna take that position down to the 12th of the B and the 11th of the E. We're then gonna take that back up to the 14th and 12th. And from here, we can then go to the 11th of the G and B. And then bring our pinky finger in to the 12th of the E. And then we'll go back to familiar territory, D and G string, ninth and eighth frets. Down to the eighth of the D and the sixth of the G. Together it goes like this.
We're now going to have a look at the third verse and we're going to play a bit of lead guitar here and that's going to come straight out of the back of the instrumental. Let me just show you the clip first and then we'll break it down. So as I'm sure you could see, we were starting at the 4th fret of the D, hammering onto the 6th. We're then going to play the 6th fret of the D another 3 times. And then pull that back to the 4th fret. Afterwards, we are then going to jump over to the G string, and we're going to start with a mini string rake. And by that I mean just muting the G string, or the D and G strings. And then we're going to play the 6th fret of the G 3 times, and then pull that back to the 4th. It just goes like this. At this point, we are then going to jump down to the 3rd fret of the G, and play this. So again, we're doing a mini string rake, then the third fret of the G, then another mini string rake, and the third fret of the G. Then we're gonna do a string rake, and move over to the sixth fret of the G. Then play that again. Then do a couple of string rakes, and then play the sixth fret of the G twice. So we get this. And the last thing for us to do is to slide all the way to the 9th of the D, 8th of the G. Going down to the 8th of the D and 6th of the G. Again, it just goes like this. So the very last thing for us to talk about is the outro. And we've just got a few chords to play here. It's nothing crazy. We've got an E major, E flat minor, G sharp minor, and B major. Now the thing you want to pay attention to is the rhythm with this one. So just check this out.
so that was my lesson on Naive by the Kooks. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to get involved in the channel, please head over to my Patreon page and I will see you on the next lesson.